everyone, welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Talia, I'm an artist and interior stylist in Los Angeles, and I help people affordably curate more beautiful and functional spaces. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about one of the ways I do that, the curate beauty part. Today we're gonna be talking about art, le art, if you are fancy and or French. In today's video, I'm gonna be giving you some tips and best practices in curating a cohesive art collection over time, no matter what your budget or art style. I'm gonna be showing you some pieces from my collection and also offering some of my favorite places to shop for art online. So I hope this video is useful. If you enjoy it, I would appreciate if you threw a slice of pizza at the New York subway rat that is the YouTube algorithm by liking this video, sharing it with anyone you think might use some help in the art department and uh, comment down below what is some of your favorite places to purchase art and or what are some of your favorite pieces that you currently have in your collection I'd love to know without further ado let's get started so my first suggestion in curating a long-term cohesive art collection would be redefining what all you consider art and this is kind of broken down into three separate areas so first area is reconsidering more than just two-dimensional art I think when people hear art they automatically think of 2d pieces that you can hang on a wall but as you're probably aware the scope of what is considered art is is so wide and when you're picking pieces that are going to be a part of your collection in your home you want to make sure that you're including absolutely everything and anything that fits your budget, that fits your style, that fits your space. So that's everything from wood sculptures, ceramics, glass pieces, abstract pieces made out of a wide variety of repurposed materials. There's art made out of different textiles. Um, I would even consider some pieces of furniture, art, depending on whether or not they're, you know, clearly made more with the decorative part of the furniture versus the functional part of the furniture in mind. From my collection, some of my favorite pieces are wooden statues that I've picked up on my travel from Indonesia. One was in Bali, one was in Georgia. They weren't a matching pair, but they're good friends now. I also have this gun that I got from Istanbul, it's supposed to be a replica of like a 19th century Ottoman Empire handheld mini rifle. Um, really fun time trying to get that through the airport uh, security in Istanbul, which all things considered, like a couple weeks after I got back from my trip, there was a terrorist attack at that airport, so I could understand uh, why they would be you know, scrutinous of even a clearly decorative gun-shaped item coming through security, but um, yeah, that's <laughs> one of the things about collecting art is that a lot of times, depending on where you get your art, they come with a fun story, right? Um, in my collection, I also have a lot of ceramics. I'm a ceramic artist, so a lot of my ceramic pieces are pieces that I've created, but there's also a lot of ceramic artists that I'm really interested in purchasing pieces uh, to add to my collection. I also have like <laughs> one of my funnier items that I do actually consider a piece of art is this pool cue that I have mounted in my office. It's the closet office area. Uh, that's a pool cue that I stole and I had very good reason to steal the pool cue. Um, that story is coming. I think I promised it at 100,000 subscribers. So if you're interested in how and why I was able to steal a pool cue, uh, do subscribe, but uh, I have it mounted on the wall because I think it's art. Again, it's a really fun story to tell and uh, not a traditional art piece in, in the least, but part of my collection certainly. <laughs> So the second point in redefining what you consider art for your collection is to have a deeper appreciation of two-dimensional art. I know I just got through talking about expanding your collection beyond 2D art, but let's not pretend that we're not going to have a significant amount of art on the wall, at least if you're a person like me. So that could include, you know, traditional, more traditional types of pieces, oils, acrylics, watercolor, stencil, pencil, 
crayon even on paper or canvas. I've seen a lot of really cool works on cardboard. Uh, we've also talking photography, digital prints, which are huge selling points for artists in the 21st century. I've seen companies that are making completely AI generated art that's printed on canvases, which is really cool. So in my collection, lithographs have been a fun way to affordably add a more renowned artist to the collection. Lithographs are a more hands-on process of making copies of an original print and so oftentimes you'll see um, lithographs that are individually numbered and hand signed by an artist or made for a special book or opening of a certain event. One of my favorite pieces in my collection is a an original lithograph from 1972 from Alexander Calder who is well at least who I knew more for being the guy who did the big mobile installations but he was also a very prolific painter and sculptor and this lithograph was from a larger set of books that he released in 1972 and is in really great a condition. There's possibilities also of finding lithographs from other really renowned artists who were really prolific creators of art. So I've seen Andy Warhol lithographs that were signed, individually hand signed. I've seen Picasso lithographs that are being sold from the collection of his, you know, one of his children. Um, I can't afford a Warhol individually, so that's the way to do it. My collection also contains quite a few prints, just like standard produced prints. And I love a good print uh, because it's a great way to just get a piece of art on the wall. It's especially a great way to support small artists, digital artists, and we're gonna talk about places to purchase prints later on in the video. Um, I typically like to gear toward smaller small batch produced prints although i do have a few kind of like larger more well-known prints my prada print that i got from decenio is one that comes to mind it's like any home tour of a youtube beauty guru that you watched between 2017 and, and 2019 has a, a Prada print from Decenio, I think, on the wall. Uh, I also like my piece that I had in my closet that I had from Ikea. And the first time I went to Japan, that same print was on the wall at the Airbnb I stayed at in Tokyo. And Japan is a place that I've always wanted to visit. And so it's kind of cool to have that connection to art uh, and be able to go somewhere and see the same piece of art. Uh, but I definitely wouldn't want that to be like the case for every single piece <laughs> in my collection. So definitely mass produced prints are fine to use sparingly. They can be a really uh, integral part of your collection, but there's a lot of other places to get wonderful prints that are just as affordable, that are way more unique and special for your space. And in that point, talking about um, like prints and availability of art kind of leads me into the third area uh, that I want you to think about when you're redefining what you consider art in building your art collection and that is classes of art. I think the idea of building an art collection has like a really snobby connotation and that idea can kind of be limiting in what you think of when you are thinking of pieces that are going to be part of your collection, especially if it's a collection that you're hoping to have over the long term. You might not think of uh, prints, especially mass produced prints or print that you got from Ikea as being something that you would consider part of your art collection. And like I said, you definitely want to have uh, some variety in, in your pieces, but that's more for individuality and less about, you know, caring about where specifically your pieces came from or, or if they were, you know, pieces that are expensive enough to be considered worthy of an art collection, right? Your kids scribbles on a piece of loose leaf paper put in a frame can be considered art. You know, dogs playing poker is art. It, 
it might not be good art to some people, um, but they can definitely be key pieces in your collection. And um, I don't want you to overlook certain things based on whether or not they seem appropriate for building an art collection or what other people might think about them because at the end of the day you are building a collection of pieces that you love and admire and appreciate enough to want to put on display for other people so it really starts with your care and appreciation and less it's less about what other people think that all being said there's nothing wrong with wanting a little bit of help flushing out your art style picking some pieces that are a little bit more elevated um, maybe bringing your collection to the next level so I'm going to be leaving a link in the description box if you'd like an opportunity to work with me one-on-one -on -one to find some art for your home so now that we have fully appreciated the greatest scope of what is art and what we can include in our art collections my second tip for curating a cohesive collection is to have a general theme in mind with the pieces that you're bringing into your space and certainly I don't want you to get so wrapped up in a theme that all of the pieces in your collection become really matchy matchy but especially if you're going to be adding pieces to your collection over a long period of time having a general theme will ensure that your collection makes sense as a whole right so if you are a minimalist your general theme could be like white pieces white pieces of art no matter what that is how that's interpreted uh, you could be a black and white photography fan your theme could be all florals however you choose to represent florals in your art um, your theme could be a style of art so maybe all of your pieces are pop art or maybe you're really into uh, impressionistic pieces maybe you really love renaissance portraiture maybe you have oil on canvas and photography and digital prints but all of your pieces are landscapes there's a lot of different ways that you can go about uh, incorporating a theme and you can go as loose with it or as on the nose as you want for the style that you're going for in your space. Here in my collection uh, I think I have a pretty obvious theme uh, based on what you've seen of my art thus far. Leave a comment down below what you think my my general art theme is while I flash some of my favorite pieces across the screen. Pretty obvious right? <laughs> My third tip for curating a art collection is to create your own art. If you are a budding art collector, especially a collector on the budget, I certainly don't want you to discount the possibility that you can have some really significant pieces in your collection that are pieces that you make with your own hands. There is an artist in all of us. There truly is. And I believe in you. Several of the pieces in my collection are pieces that I've created myself. I have ceramics that I've created. I've got my own photography on sale at Society6, link down below. I also have some uh, canvas pieces that I've created, everything from like the frame and stretching out the canvas, including this orange piece that I've got behind me. Now, from a distance, this thing looks great. Up close, it looks great. If you get real close in the corners, you can really see that twas I that put the wooden frame together and uh, didn't do a great job at it, but that doesn't matter. This is still a really significant part of my art collection. It's the first thing you kind of see when you come into my house. It looks great and uh, it costs me significantly less than if I would have purchased a piece of art that big. We're going to get to a size in a second so hold on. I also want to point out that creating your own art doesn't have to mean starting completely from scratch like taking your own photo or certainly not making your own canvas pieces right some of the pieces of art in my collection are pieces that i have repurposed from other pieces of art the three pieces uh, that i have hanging on my wall in my bathroom were from a series of four hanging scrolls that i purchased on ebay many years ago they were way too big for the space so i cut them down to the size that i wanted for the space 
and presto, I have art. One of my favorite pieces that I have hanging in my bedroom is a piece on, on a t-shirt and it was hand painted by the artist and I loved it so much, I just put it in a frame, presto, art. I've also taken wallpaper, um, a sample a large sheet of wallpaper that I got and spray painted the bottom of it gold, put it in an Ikea frame and hung it in my kitchen, presto, art. We already talked about setting aside this idea of uh, your art needing to be a certain price or a certain worthiness to be included in an in art collection. So definitely just dis don't discount yourself and your children if you have them in creating pieces of art that can be really meaningful pieces in your collection. So my next tip in curating your art collection is to go big. Don't forget to incorporate some larger pieces in your collection. This is so crucial for my fellow studio, apartment, and other small home dwellers because a large statement piece can be such an incredible focal point uh, for a small space. Uh, but I guess it's equally important for people in larger homes because small art can just look so weird in a space, right? I'm a member of a lot of um, interior styling, interior decorating appreciation groups on Facebook and people will post pictures of their home. And one of the main things I always think when people post pictures of like their wall and their wall art, a lot of the times, and this is across all like styles and seeming like income levels based on the, the quality of the home and the decor and stuff inside. It's a lot of people just have really tiny, tiny art and it just looks like it's like floating on a wall, like really randomly, like tiny wall art floating above the couch, tiny decor items on your consoles and your mantle, giant TV, tiny photography. <laughs> I don't understand. When you're considering your art, especially uh, your wall art in this instance, you're gonna wanna make sure that you are choosing pieces that are an appropriate scale for your space. And if they're not large enough to fit the space, you're gonna wanna trick the scale, which I mainly like doing through the use of a gallery wall. Creating a gallery wall is a really easy way to display, first of all, uh, numerous pieces of art that you like, just group them all together. It's also a great way to display art that would be too small to fit in a space by itself. Individually, the pieces would be too small, but as one whole piece of the gallery, it's the perfect size. And because I already have this general theme that's running through most of the pieces in my collection, I can swap uh, pieces out from my gallery wall with ease and not really create too much of a disruption in the overall feeling of the space. Now if you're making your own art like we talked about before, this is a really great time to go big because art as we know can get expensive. The larger the piece is, the more expensive it has the potential to be and if you are making your own, even if you are you know buying wood to make a frame and buying canvas and doing all that stuff, chances are you're gonna be able to make something, especially if you're making a, you know, five, six foot piece, you're going to be able to create a piece of art that is still significantly cheaper than something you could buy, even at the side. So again, in my home when I'm creating these large scale pieces, I really love to go the abstract route even though the theme of my house is generally more geared toward like the human shape. Um, I'm not that great of a painter, so when I'm making an abstract piece, it's not like painting a face. You, we all know what a face looks like, and we all know if you're looking at a face that someone draws who can't draw or can't paint, that they can't draw or paint. But you can't tell me, this piece behind me, that I didn't put the gold foil exactly where I intended the gold foil to be, right? This is a, this is a masterpiece because I made it myself and it's perfect 
exactly the way I intended it to be up here. My last tip for curating your art collection is to get plugged into your local art scene. This is going to be your best chance to purchase some original or limited edition pieces at an affordable price to support local artists and to really get your like fancy like art person, I'm an art collector feeling on is to get plugged into the art scene in your city. So I live in LA. This is probably a lot easier for me than it is for other people. There are a ton of like galleries that are always having openings with like little hors d'oeuvre cocktail parties relatively easy to get in. We've got like art talks and art walks and art pop-ups and all sorts of places and it's relatively easy for me to be introduced to new art and artists and different types of art. Uh, you might have to work a little bit harder, drive a little bit further depending on where you are uh, to get plugged into your local art community, but I am guaranteeing you, like even if you're on Antarctica, I feel like there's an art community. The scientists who live on Antarctica, I'm sure at least one of them is an artist. Get to know that guy. You are now plugged into your local art community. And that is is very like supporting your friends who are artists definitely very important and crucial part of supporting the local art community the uh, attention whore piece that's painted on the t-shirt in my bedroom I picked that up at an art show that an artist friend invited me to where I met this third person, Surly Girly, who's the artist that created that shirt. She then went on to be a Muay Thai fighter and circus performer in Thailand before she like got rid of her social media. So artists are very interesting people. Um, I've also picked up a really fun print from this Uruguayan artist, Miguel Rubial. And I only found out about him because a friend of mine who's an artist invited me to a show at a custom framing shop. The owner of the shop, Hector, is an artist himself and he puts on gallery shows in his store. And in connecting through him, I was able to find out about this fantastic artist and picked up a print of his and I'm looking at other originals uh, on his website. I'll have him linked down below. Uh, I also just in supporting my own friends in selling their art have picked up some original pieces and prints that have been important parts of my collection including one that's in my gallery wall it's called Otoi Media I picked that up from my friend Mark when I went to one of his shows a few years ago where he painted these incredible vivid colorful portraits 108 of them like if I can find a photo I'll have it on the screen but just such an incredible work and in getting to meet all of his friends and they had a lovely little show and from that I picked up two prints from that series as well as an original piece that I've had on my wall for years since then so really the the connections that you make in getting to know artists and going to art shows supporting your artistic friends in person it's it's gonna be invaluable and again if you're looking to kind of build a collection where your pieces have meaning this is going to be huge because obviously anything that you buy that you're supporting a friend is going to be as significant as something that you you know picked up on your travels or something that you made yourself so i know I, we just talked about you know getting to know local artists and getting into your <laughs> local art scene but now i'm going to be talking about some of my favorite places online to shop for art like i said i know that a lot of people depending on where you are you might have slightly limited access to an art scene but the internet is everywhere so for prints i'm gonna recommend Etsy and Society6. And I know that you can find everything on Etsy, including some really great original pieces, but I'm gonna recommend these two sites for prints in particular because I've just found such a 
cool wide range of prints in all different styles and some of them are available to print, some of them are available to ship. So I really love sites like Etsy and Society6 because they allow you to search for styles of art and introduce you to artists that you probably wouldn't have found if you were just like a Googling or hunting through Instagram. This is especially true for a lot of the digital prints that I've purchased. I found so many really inventive digital artists uh, that are creating prints on Etsy and Society6 that I'm obsessed with, especially if you're into pop art. I found a lot of really great stores on Etsy, I'll have them linked down below, that sell this like um, Real Housewives reality TV show inspired art. And actually one of my favorite prints in my office is my Nancy Joe. This is Alexis Nyers print I got from a shop on Etsy called The Smash Shop, which unfortunately doesn't seem like they're selling pieces anymore, which is really sad, but the owner of the shop was an incredibly talented digital artist and this scene was one of my favorite scenes, like OG reality TV show theme, and I never would have come across this person's like Instagram page or found her on Google so I really appreciate sites like Etsy and Society6 for exposing um, the work of small artists, digital artists, photographers such as myself to the shopping public. For larger posters I really love Poster Club and Decenio. Like I mentioned I've ordered a print from Decenio before, had a really great experience with how it was packaged and if you're looking to add uh, larger pieces, if you have a bigger wall that you need to fill up with the piece of art and you're unsure about the direction that you want to go in terms of style and theme for your art, a poster is a good way to start because they're easily replaceable. So Etsy and Society6, Decenio, those are all really great for more mass-produced art pieces. If you're looking to get more exclusive and get a limited edition print, the website I'm going to suggest in this instance is Absolute Art. Yes! Absolute, like the vodka company. Absolute Vodka has had a long history of supporting the art community. Several really famous artists have done commissioned Absolute Vodka bottles and accompanying poster art, uh, and that's including Basquiat, uh, Keith Haring, Andy Warhol, and tons of others. And so somewhere in between that general appreciation for art and making vodka, the Absolute Vodka Company created Absolute Art, which is a website where they continue to work with emerging artists and sell limited edition prints and pieces. So if you're looking for a more curated platform to purchase your art, my site recommendation is going to be Artspace. This is a really great site, especially if you are a lover of contemporary or modern art. So the site partners with artists and sells authenticated, signed, and numbered limited edition prints and original pieces. This site is also great because they have curators who will work with you to find a piece of art that uh, will fit well within your home or your collection. A lot of the artists that are featured on this website have had their work featured in galleries and in museums and so it's a really great place to start. If you have a little bit more money to spend and you're looking to really step up your game in terms of adding some significant pieces into your collection even though we've already talked about taking the kind of classes aspect out of art there's nothing wrong with of course wanting to 
incorporate some more um, expensive pieces in your collection if you've got it to spend and this website would be a really great starting point for you because of the built-in curators although I will again mention that I also offer an art sourcing service on my website it will be linked down below so if you're interested in that you can check it out so finally if you're looking to add some original pieces to your collection my recommendation for website to search on would be First Dibs. I really love First Dibs because it connects you to galleries around the world and lets you purchase directly from those galleries. So the range and type of art that's available on the site is, is wide and astounding. Um, I also really like that if you favorite pieces of art, sometimes the seller will message you um, discounts so do try that another thing i really love about this website is for some of the original pieces being sold the galleries listing those pieces will list some of the provenance information which is basically the story of how the art came to be in the hands of whoever is selling it and that is a way to verify that a piece that you are purchasing that is an original actually is an original and first dibs has a really really wide range of art so not just originals but uh, hand signed prints, decor items, furniture. I really do love spending a ton of time on this website searching and looking up all the uh, original Picasso pieces that I'm going to own when I get to be a rich old lady. The other site that I really like for originals is The Real Real. Uh, if you are familiar with The Real Real for pre-loved handbags and shoes and clothing like I have been for years and years, you will also be very happy to learn that they also sell art and I've seen some really really great pieces on that site over the course of years. They also sell furniture and decor items. So again, when you're getting to the point in your collection that you're looking to elevate your collection, maybe start adding pieces that cost a little bit more, a little bit more significant. These would be two really great websites to try. And that's the video. I hope these tips and tricks on collecting art from an art collector have been helpful to any of you out there who are looking to grow your collection. I will have a bunch of things linked including uh, information about my art sourcing services, some information about different artists that I talked about different links for cool art that I've found for sale recently that you might want to check out so do pop down to the description for more information on all that if this video was useful or helpful to you in any way I would appreciate it if you like the video and subscribe to the channel for more I make videos eventually about everything having to do with small space interiors art decor plant care and all that jazz next week I'm going to be talking about tools I'm just going through all of the things that I have an abundance of in my house so I've talked about plants I've talked about art now I'm going to talk about tools because I've got a bunch of those I'm going to be going through all of the tools that every home needs which I think is especially helpful if you are a single woman like myself so do tune in next week if you have any questions about tools I would love to know what different types of art you have, what your art collection looks like now, so leave those comments down below. And until next time, guys, I hope you're well. Bye. Just wait for them to catch the criminal. It's always a helicopter, always a police helicopter. Zooming around, looking for this one criminal. I want to get out of Hollywood so bad I can't even stand it. Okay. <laughs>